So, so you do agree that some prophets were not uh, ordered to write books? They, they, were, they wasn't given books, no. Okay. Their, their, their assignment was different. So they were like revivers and reminders. But they, know what, they were not book givers. It was, they were not given a book and they didn't leave a book behind. Yeah, yeah. Right. And but, but remember, before I said, do you, do you not believe that um, some prophets are sent and they're not ordered to write books? That's what yeah, I we, we, We're on the same page yeah. with that. Yeah. But it doesn't answer the bigger question of understanding prophethood. <laughs> prophethood is not a guessing game. It's a very much established pattern. So for example, when a prophet is to come, when Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was to come, there were people who were scholars in studying previous scriptures and traditions. So they received traditions. You want cappuccino? Uh, nothing. You sure? Now, so prophets now, when Prophet Muhammad, before he came, there were people who were scholars in studying scriptures, previous scriptures, and traditions. And they knew of the traditions, they knew of some of the previous scriptures, and they were expecting a prophet. So a lot of them went to Medina, expecting him to come to Medina. And some of them were traveling to various parts of Syria and the Mesopotamia, expecting a prophet. Right, so the question is, when a prophet is to come, who is a book giver, the people who study the previous scriptures, they know him, they expect him, and they can recognize him. So what I'm trying to say to you, it's not a random thing where it's a guessing game. Number one, they've been spoken about previously. The people who study the scriptures will know them and recognize them. And when they come and they announce their prophethood, people believe in them, some people fight them, some people eventually accept them and their legacy lives on. So 1500 years ago, there Prophet Muhammad, both, 1500 years ago, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he came. His message survived and his message elevated to the high rank of being one of the three Abrahamic faiths. So you have Christianity, you have Judaism, and you have Islam. So from Prophet Muhammad's time to now. I don't believe in any. That, that, that's fine. I, I, I take that. But what I'm trying to say is that Islam survived 1500 years ago when so many other people claimed prophethood. So many other people tried bringing out religions and they all fell apart. They fell, they disintegrated, they get lost in history, they never survive. But Islam survived, the Quran survived by the protection of Allah, and inshallah it will survive until the return of Jesus, until the Day of Judgment. So, would you say that because something survived, that it is, that is proof that it's not a book? The survival of Islam, because now you have three religions, right. only, but you believe only one could be right. Right. You, you have Islam survive. And that's, that's a, despite all the powers that be that is fighting against it, it survived. And that's very important to take note of, to observe and to learn from. That's the same with Christianity. Right. That's the same with Judaism. Okay, we're going to get to that. So if we're looking at, we're going to do a comparative review of the three faiths and see what, what we can get out of it. So, but what I'm trying to say to you, Islam survived 1500 years ago. Prophet Muhammad survived, he elevated. His legacy continued when many others who have claimed prophethood, who have started religion, they all fail and fall apart. And up to this day now, in 2024, in January, we in Speaker's Corner, many powers of the world today, economic powers, political powers, hidden societies are fighting against Islam. And the only thing that allow Islam to continue surviving, going all over the Caribbean, covering all the Middle East, all over Europe, is because Islam is protected by Allah and Islam is Allah's religion. And Allah would give victory to it. Whether or not you like it or you dislike it. Now, that is what you believe. Okay? That is what you personally hold in your heart and what you do. Yeah? The Jew, 
can say the same thing about Judaism. The Christian can say the same thing about Christianity. Okay? Just because something survives or has large numbers of people following, doesn't mean that it's true. Right, let's go to the next stage now. Let's go to the next stage now. What made Islam superior as a faith? Islam is superior as a faith. Fundamentally, it is the strongest opponent to idolatry. It is the strongest opponent to tyranny. It is the strongest opponent to blasphemy. All the blasphemy that mankind has made against God and against the Prophet, Islam is the strongest opponent to godless life. Islam is the strongest opponent to hedonism. So wherever you find Islam, I'm talking about the uniqueness of Islam. Now. What makes Islam unique? Because in Islam, you have the purest concept of monotheism. It's the strongest opponent to idolatry and shirk. You, you know what is shirk? Sh shirk is where you take the creation and you elevate the creation equal to God or something above God. So in your world, that will be idolatry. To give anything equal status and power to God. So take the God qualities and you add it to the creation and make the creation God. That is shirk. So that's treason against God. Okay. Right. So you have a strong voice against idolatry. We have a strong voice against shirk. Shirk and idolatry is the same thing. Right. And there are six, we mentioned before, there are six manifestations of idolatry, six manifestations of shirk. We, we had this conversation before. But what I'm trying to say to you, what makes Islam special and different to Christianity, the new the New Testament Christianity, as well as Judaism, number one. Judaism does not recognize Jesus as a prophet. Are you with me? So if it fails to recognize a prophet Jesus and Muhammad as two authorities to whom God sent, that expression of Judaism gets knocked out. You cannot reject God's messenger and claim to be of God. You reject God's prophets, you reject two of God's prophets, you get knocked out of the race. The problem now with the New Testament, the New Testament gets knocked out because in most cases, they take human beings, men, a man, and they give that man God qualities and they elevate a man to the status of God. That gets knocked out on account of idolatry. Islam now, Islam now is saying, Islam is the strongest opponent to idolatry, shirk, tyranny, godlessness, and hedonism. I, I've listened to everything you said. You've said a lot, and I want to I want to go back to these points. Okay? First thing that I want to bring up is you said that Islam is the purest form to worship God. Monotheism. Mo yeah. Monotheism. Mon monotheism. Yeah. You said that that that's what you said. Yeah. Is the purest yeah. expression from the Abrahamic faith. Yeah. The purest. Monotheism you can ever find. Okay. What I would say is all religions are false. They're all lies, all created by Satan, the devil, deceive those that are blind. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking okay. about what yeah. makes, what is the distinct features yeah. between Islam, Christianity, and Judaism. And what I'm saying, where Judaism fail, it failed to accept two very fundamental personalities who God sent. It, Judaism failed to accept Jesus and it rejects Muhammad as prophets of God. So it gets knocked out. Secondly, but, but, but that, that, that gets knocked out. That's what I'm saying. Christianity but failed. That's your belief in Muhammad. I'm prophet. talking about Prophet Muhammad and yeah. Jesus, both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But just because, um, you know, the Jews might not believe in Prophet Muhammad. And Jesus. Okay. And Jesus. And Jesus. Right. Yeah. yeah. So if you don't believe in Jesus according to the Bible, yeah. you are an antichrist. Yeah. Good. 100%. 100%. Right. Now, so you knock out you knock out Judaism. Yeah. I knock out Judaism. Right. Yeah. And I also knock out Prophet Muhammad. How? Because I believe that the Quran contradicts the holy scriptures from the old what we call okay, men call the old testament and the new testament. Yeah, mm. I believe that the Old Testament, what we call the Old Testament and New Testament, which is really all just one 
one uh, collection of books, one pile of books. It's, it's not, not one. It's not old and new. It's not one. There's nothing new and old under the sun. So, so what we There's call nothing old, old and new under the sun? Come yeah, on, yeah, pull yourself together, man. Nothing new. Oh my God, you were going good all the time, no, no, no. you know. No, no. You need some water, there, there you're getting new, dehydrated. There is nothing new under the sun. There is nothing new under the sun. Okay. Do you agree? It's an old proverb. Legedi tahtal shams, yeah. There's nothing new under the... So I, I've, said the, I've said the right thing, yeah? <laughs> have I said the You're right... slippery now. All right, go on, have go I on. Have said the right thing? Do your thing, man. Do your thing, Nathan. <laughs> okay. Go on. Okay, I'm okay. with you. I'm following. Yeah? I'm following you. So, um, the, what we call the Old Testament and the New Testament is all true because it's the Word of God, yeah? And God is His Word. All right, let's so, agree with that. So, so Let's agree with that. But, but, but I, want, I want to get to the point of um, you believing that Islam is the truth. Now, now watch this. Is it required of you or do you need to go to Mecca and circle the, the stone that has fallen from what you call heaven? Is, it, is that required of you? Can I get back to that? As, as a Muslim. Can I get back to that? But, I'm yeah. simply saying, you and I, we knock out Judaism. Did we? Yeah. Right. And we knock out Judaism under one count. It failed to recognize God, God's authority, Jesus and Muhammad. We knock it out. Right. So we leave it now with Christianity and Islam. Islam now is making a claim that any Christianity, New Testament, Old Testament, that gives the creation of God qualities of God and elevate the creation of God equal to God, that is idolatry. Now, no, I don't believe. now, what you have to do now is accept that any time a religion has to be right, it has to be right by God in terms of acknowledging God uniqueness. And any time a religion, a religion falls, it fails because it fails to acknowledge God's divine, unique authority. So, for example, if a, a religion wants to be accepted as to be something from God, it cannot support idolatry. Idolatry is a problem. And I'm, I'm simply saying the New Testament fail on the account. New Testament followers fail because they take God qualities attributed to a man called Jesus and raise that man equal to God. That's how it failed. It failed on the account of idolatry. And for, for Christianity to recover, or for the New Testament to recover, to gain back any kind of legitimate status with God, it has to abandon all forms of idolatry. If you don't abandon idolatry, every step you take is in vain. But now, now we've got to go back to the point that I've made of, is it required? of you to go and visit Mecca and circle the stone that's fallen from what you call heaven. What's the problem with it? What's the problem? I don't understand what's the issue. No, no, I'm asking. Is, is yeah, it... but you're asking me a question, you yeah. know the answer. No, no, no. no. You no. know the answer. So, so, so it is... You have not, you have not found that question, yeah. brought no, that question no, no. to this conversation, except you know the answer. No, no, and no, no, you, no. You, Of that's course you don't. Because, no. Because some... But you know the answer. Just like, just like I said about Hashim, Hashim said, that uh, God didn't create evil. You okay. said that God does create evil. Yes. So I said God. A, I said God created every single thing. Yes. And and, and, and like I've good said, and bad. This is a Muslim, and you are a Muslim. All right. So now there's a distinction. Someone's saying one thing, and someone's saying the other thing. So now no. I have to ask the question. It's, it's not that simple. Is right, for example, you might meet a Muslim who says Jesus is God. What are you going to say about that? I'm going to ask other Muslims do you believe that Jesus is God because Hashim said no but God if, doesn't if you evil. meet a Muslim God does not uh, Nathan you have spoken to many Muslims yeah. in speakers corner yeah. quite you spend a lot of time having conversations with them I've witnessed conversations with you and them yeah if you meet a Muslim who said Jesus is God how would you respond to that I would say that is not what a lot of Muslims that I've spoken to believe. Right. That's what I would say. Right. Now, hear what I would say. But if a Muslim said that, then I'm speaking to that Muslim personally. Right. 
him. Yeah. yeah? I'm not going to say yeah. whether he's right or wrong. I'm just speaking with him. Right. I'm, I'm trying to get to the truth. Right. And yeah? I'm trying to explain to you how sometimes the truth is not that black and white. Muslims oh, so may... you don't believe that the truth is black and white? No, I'm saying it's not always as black and white as we make it. For example, I'm giving you an example, a practical example. A Muslim may say Jesus is God. Right. So I would ask him, what do you mean by that? And he will say, well, Jesus is not capital G-O-D. He is common G-O-D. And he's not God because he's not God because he is a God. He is common G-O-D because they worship him as a God. So they have made him a God. So if Jesus is a God, it's only because you make him a God. So for example, in India, some people worship a cow. I'm not saying the I'm saying to them, they have made the cow into a god. And that cow is a common G-O-D, not a capital G-O-D. Right. So even though if you're having conversations like this in depth, you have to give people the opportunity to explain themselves what they mean. So I'm saying to you, some Muslims will tell you Jesus is common G-O-D, not capital G-O-D. And how Jesus became God is because you worship him, you make him your God. But Jesus himself does not have a God nature because the nature of God is God is all-knowing. And God does not rely on anyone for his existence. But every living thing under the heavens and the earth relies upon God for their existence. And God is perfect. And Jesus... I've, I've, I've agreed with you, yeah? I agree with you, even up to this point. Yes, sir. But remember, I, I don't want us to jump all over the place. We can get back to this. But, but this, even I though it appears to be all over the place, we're talking about a fundamental creed that has to be defined in Christian and Muslim con conversation. So you, you, are a, you call yourself a believer, right? And as a believer of the New Testament, we have to be quite clear that you do not fall into idolatry. Yeah. So Muslims... I don't fall into idolatry. Right. And you take idolatry very seriously. Yeah. And do you find many Christians, modern day Christians, who are followers of the New Testament, do you think a lot of them yeah. fall into idolatry? Yes, I do. Would you agree with that? Yeah, right. So Muslims... But also, I also believe that Muslims fall into idolatry. Okay, tell me about Muslim idolatry. Go on. Is it required... I'll say it again. Is it required for a Muslim to go to Mecca and circle, um, circle the stone that's fallen from what you call is heaven, which that is a physical stone. So do you believe that heaven is a physical place? I believe heaven is a physical place. Do you believe that Allah is in heaven? I don't believe Allah is in heaven. I believe he's above his arsh. Okay. So do you believe that some people will be able to see God, like you said previously? We had this before. conversation before, yeah, just, and I'm just, saying, just a, just a whosoever God, God wants in the future, so in the hereafter. So how can they see him if he's above and, 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 and beyond heaven and deeper than heaven? How can they how, see him? How? Yeah. Okay. To the best of my knowledge, after we die, we leave this planet, we go to our grave, we stay in that place for a time and we get resurrected. At resurrection, whosoever God chooses to reveal himself to, he will reveal himself to whosoever he wills on the day of judgment. But, but, but what we've just clarified is this. You believe that heaven is a physical place. Yeah? Yes. You believe also that God is not in heaven. Do you agree? Yeah, he's above his arsh. So, where do the people go that are in heaven? Are they in heaven or are they beyond heaven? Because yeah. if God is beyond heaven and deeper than heaven, okay, then how is it that someone can see God if they're in heaven? That's what I'm asking. Right. Because heaven can't contain God. So, I'm asking you. No. Well, I'm answering the question yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah. And I'm saying. You understand. Remember, remember, remember we're, all we're doing is trying to get to the truth. That is the right. main point that we're, we're trying to do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. It's not about religion. Okay. Yeah. Heavens, yeah. there are different levels of heaven. Seven levels of heaven. So, so, so he's beyond all of them. Slow down. Okay, go ahead. There are several layers 
levels, dimensions, mansions of heavens. Are you, are you with me? Yeah. And above the heavens is the Arsh of God. So mean to say the Arsh, when we say his Arsh, we refer to his, his throne, the throne of God, overarch the seven heavens. And Allah is above his Arsh. Now, on Yom al Qiyamah, on the Day of Judgment, God is going to resurrect mankind. Man will die, he will resurrect. Everything will die. The angels, everything. Everything that is living will die. And then God will give life to whomsoever he wants to give life. And he will allow whosoever he choose to see him according to his will. Now, if you're asking me for those fine details, I don't have those fine details with me. And I don't know. But this is what I know and this is what I believe. I respect that you said that you don't know. The fine details, no, yeah. I, of course. But it, 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 I don't have tissues. Yeah, so, so yeah. It's really cold. Yeah. Brother, you have tissues? Huh? Tissue. Please. I don't have any. Oh, I have a, f a spear one. This is clean. Okay. Right. Yes. Go on, Nathan. What, 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 we, what we understand is. And I respect the fact that you said the fine details, I don't know. Yes. Yeah? Because it's better to say that you don't know than to make it up and then you might deceive someone. Yeah? yeah, yeah. You know we don't do that. Yeah, yeah. When I say we, I mean you and I. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying not... <laughs> uh, <other> people, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, okay. But you and I, we, we don't function at that level. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Now, the, the, the point of contention that I have there is that you said that you'll be able to see God if God allows you, yeah? Yes, sir. And we've said, we've understood that God is above the seven heavens, yeah? He's above it. Above his throne. Yeah, he's, yes. he's above his throne. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, the, 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 the people that die, their soul, yeah. their spirit, you say, go to heaven, one of the seven heavens. Yeah? No, I didn't say that. Wh whoever God wants to resurrect. Uh, yeah, on resurrection. Yeah, yeah. 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 Resurrect. Yeah, yeah, on resurrection. Okay. So, you said that they, some of them, may be able to see God. By the permission of God. By the permission of God. Yes. Now, that, to me, completely contradicts the holy scriptures because it said that no one can see god no one can see god god's invisible okay invisible that, now, that but that's not what the scripture says in. now 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 you said that you'll be able to see god if god allows you to see him yeah like he like, like he's like something physical because heaven's physical right so the people inside there they're also physical no, we can, we can speculate on that part, but it's two things we need to do. Two things. Number one, we agree, you and I agree, that on this plane, in this flesh, at this time, on earth, no human being is allowed to see God in this plane and this flesh. I believe that, that you can. Right. Just a minute, slow down. You believe you can, and you have a, a, an explanation for that. But when I'm talking about see, with... The naked eyes. This is the yeah. one I'm referring to. And, and, and this, this is where we cut the line. All right. I do not believe that you can see God like, in a physical state. That like, okay. heaven is a physical place. All right, okay, we're going to get to that. Slow down, slow down. We're going to get to that. Now. So we are talking about that. Now, first of all, when the Bible made the reference that no man will be able to see God in this plane here, makes reference to this plane. Now, that's a very good conversation, but you started off saying, you're gonna to prove to me that Islam supports idolatry. And I'm saying to you, you won't find a faith on this earth that is so staunch in opposing idolatry, tyranny, hedonism, yeah, I don't godless believe. governance there is and no godless religion, there's no religion that I believe that even follows God right because no. God is not 
Really, look, he didn't give what I'm trying to say. gave himself free. What, what I'm trying to say is, yeah. this is where Islam stands out. Yeah. It stands out. Yeah. And you will come to realize that what I'm saying, this is a fact. Islam stands out like that. Now, I am simply saying to you, which you agreed to me, you agreed before, that quite a lot of the modern day followers of the New Testament are guilty of idolatry. The ones that follow religion, man this is called man-made religion. Christianity is man-made religion. Right. For what it is today, the vast majority of them are guilty of idolatry. Yeah. Right. You agree with that? Yeah. yeah. We, we're in agreement here. Now, what I'm trying to say, if you hold such a strong view on idolatry, you're not on the same page, that idolatry is treason against God. It's the, the crime that if you die upon this, you will never be forgiven. No hope of forgiveness if you die upon idolatry. Shall we look at it from the Bible? Or are you okay with it? You okay? Good. Good. If you die in your sin, right? Then idolatry. We are specifically talking about idolatry. Hence the reason why every believer in God has to work hard to rid himself and clean himself and sanitize himself from every form of idolatry and we spoke about in previous conversation the sixth form of idolatry six expressions of idolatry do we need to go over it or we can just move on we can move on right so what i'm trying to say to you is this you prove to me that islam is all about idolatry like i've said it's required for muslims to go and circle uh, the stone that you claim to fall from heaven, which you call a physical place. No, okay? that's not true. Oh, so so now heaven's not a physical place. No, that's not what I'm saying. It's not required of me to see, serve. See, I, and this is why I asked a little while ago, no. and you said, "Oh, but you already know the answer." Yeah, but what I'm so saying is yeah. too for accuracy. Yeah, yeah. So can so can be the Kaaba yeah. or the black stone. It's two different things. The the Kaaba. The Ka yeah. right. So combinating the Kaaba is a requirement, is one of the pillars of Islam, is required upon any Muslim who can afford it. Right. Yes, we agree on that. Now, you want to cite this practice as idolatry? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah. Right. How is it idolatry? Because Jesus said when he was on um, uh, up at a certain mountain and he, he ran into a... Um, was he? At the way. It says that Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, neither on this mountain um, or any other mountain, or, 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 or down in Jerusalem. I think you should get your scriptures up, let's read from it. But we agree that the classic definition of idolatry is to elevate the creation to the status of God and to take God's unique attributes, unique attributes and give it to the creation. So God's uniqueness is that he is perfect and no one else in his creation holds the quality of perfection. We also agree that one of God's unique, he is the creator and everything depends and relies on God for its existence. And God relies on nothing for, um, for his existence. So God does not rely on anyone for his exis existence and everything relies on God and God is so perfect. I agree. That's unique qualities. I agree. So if anybody take the unique qualities of God, the attributes of God and give it to the creation, yeah. that is idolatry slash shirk. Shirk billah. I agree. I agree. I agree. Yeah? Okay. Yes. John 4 and 21. Yes. Woman, Jesus replied, believe me, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. Yeah? You Samaritans worship what you do not know. 
We worship what we do know. For salvation is from the Jews, from the Israelite people. God chose. Yeah? Yes, a time is coming and has now come. So Jesus is saying that the time is now. Okay? And also in the future. Which we're in the future. Yeah? When the true, the true worshippers will worship the Father in the spirit and in the truth. Okay. okay? For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. Right, okay? Now what I believe is that you don't need to go anywhere or do anything. You, you don't need to you don't need to it's not required for you to go Nathan, to Jerusalem. Nathan, it's not required. You're such a beautiful brother. Yeah. I love you so much. Yeah, you yeah. don't even know how much I love you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You read a beautiful passage yeah. here. And for the most of it, I have no issues with it. Mm -hmm. But to use that to say the pilgrimage mm -hmm. at Mecca mm -hmm. is idolatry, that is a little bit ridiculous and far-fetched. Okay. It is a bit ridiculous. Now, I have no issues with what you read here. We can bond on that. We can unpack that. There's no issues. But to use that is very much far-fetched because the let, definition of idolatry, the classical definition of idolatry, is to give the creation God unique, um, unique qualities. So if you understand the pilgrimage, it's a visit into history where historical events took place about Abraham. So Abraham went down to Mecca and he built or rebuilt the Kaaba. And all the sacrifices and the history of Abraham, we visit that place to remember Abraham, his sacrifices, his devotion, his pathway to God, his relationship with God. And we embody that history within us so that we make that kind of sacrifice to God and we are prepared to give everything we have. Inna Allah hashtara min al-mukminina anfusahum. That the believer has traded, they have given everything of their self, wa amwalakum, of their self and their property in exchange for God's paradise. So Abraham has been elevated to a very high status of God because he was prepared to sacrifice and give the most beloved thing in his life to please God. So the question is, the pilgrimage, if you give the pilgrimage a study, you will come to realize the, the study of the pilgrimage is, is a pathway of understanding and making a connection to the historical practices of Abraham, Ibrahim, and his great life and how we want to embody those examples and we want to serve that one God. That's not idolatry. And that verse you read from the Bible has, cannot prove that the pilgrimage is idolatry. That, that's, a, that's ridiculous, man. Allow me to further explain go on, go on. why yes. I believe that this is idolatry. Okay. You believe that the stone that is in the cover yeah, has fallen from heaven. Yeah? Where God God's created heaven. Yeah? You might not say that he's in it or he Naz, how you didn't come? You're welcome. You're welcome, yeah, Salman. Yeah. You you met Naz before. Hi, yeah. Right, come come come, come stand here, Naz. Please don't punch him. <laughs> no, no slapping and fighting. Huh? Okay. Don't hit him. <laughs> yeah, go on. <laughs> you, you, we. So you agree? Can we just fill? You want to fill Naz in on, as to where we are? And what yeah, we're talking yeah. about? So what, what we're talking about is the three Abrahamic faiths, mm -hmm. and to some way we knock out Judaism, or we disqualify Judaism because Judaism failed to accept Jesus as a prophet of God, mighty, great, beloved prophet of God. And it failed to accept Prophet Muhammad as a prophet of Allah. So we knock that out because whosoever denies God's prophet has denied God. So if God send you an authority, you have to recognize that authority. Follow the instructions of the authority that God sent you. And if you deny God's authority, you have denied God. Mm -hmm. So myself and Nathan, we knock that out. So now we're talking about Islam and, and, and Christianity or the New Testament. 
Yeah. And what we're looking at is some of the unique features of Islam. So one of the uniqueness of Islam, Islam stands very strongly in opposition to idolatry, which is shirk. And we define idolatry. So idolatry or shirk is to take um, God unique qualities, attributed to his creation, and elevate the creation of God equal to God. And we also had previous conversations where we spoke about six different forms or manifestation of idolatry, six different forms. But the classic definition we're saying is that anybody who takes God unique qualities, and we talk about five unique qualities of God. God is all-knowing. He's a perfect God. He relies on no one and nothing. Everything in his creation relies upon him. And he's all-knowing. He's perfect. And um, we look at some, his, uh, he's the creator of everything. And every, he's the creator and everything else is creation. And God creation is not equal to him. So that's where we are. So now Nathan is saying to me that he believes that Al Hajj, doing the Hajj, which is one of the five pillars of Islam, is equal to idolatry. He read a passage from the, the Bible, from the scriptures. And what happened? I have no issues with the passage. I have no issues. And to me, the passage have no connection to the pilgrimage. So I briefly mentioned to Nathan that the visit to Mecca, circumulating the Kaaba, is where we go into that history, making that connection between us, Abraham and Ismail, and the sacrifices that Abraham made, and the monotheism that Abraham made. And we revisit that and bring that into our lives because Abraham was one of God's most beloved. So we look at his footsteps, his sacrifice, that history. So we visit that history and we invoke that into our lives in terms of the oneness of God, the uniqueness of God. And now Nathan is now demonstrating why he believes that visiting the Kaaba is idolatry. Carry on, Nathan. So the Kaaba, inside the Kaaba is the stone. Is that correct? The black stone you're referring to. Is this correct? Inside the Kaaba is the black stone. Yeah, the black stone that you black, said. Black, yeah, the, the black stone is at Syria. So it, it makes part of the Syria feature of the Kaaba. But inside you can pray in any direction. So it's a mosque, basically, or a temple. So you go inside and you, you can pray and worship God. But because there's so many people, everyone cannot fit in at the hazard. Time. So we pray outside. But it's facing in that direction to symbolize unity. Of, and also making Muslims look things from what the direction is that? What direction is that? Uh, from the UK to the South East. And what, what uh, position is the Black Stone? Black uh, Stone? Is that in the South East um, it's, in, it's like in the corner of the Kaaba. Yeah. yeah. From the outside. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so why, why would they create um, a, a mosque, yeah. essentially, with the, the stone in the corner of the wood. Uh, well, well, why, why would men, because men did this? I think it's that. possible that this was the place in which um, Abraham was directed towards to build the harbour and so the, 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 the stone was like symbolism in order to give structures either to Abraham or to Adam where to build the first mosque or the, uh, Yeah, because there's two narratives about it in our traditions there are two narratives first narrative is that when Adam came down to, to this earth from heaven his first place of worship was the Kaaba and from time to time it was rebuilt under the covenant of Abraham. So Abraham was given a covenant to God and one of that obligation was to build a house of God for future generations to worship. Now strategically the Kaaba um, is not, it is in that location because above the Kaaba in the heavens there's another house of God, which the angels circumambulate, they worship there. And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says 70,000 angels worship in Baitul Mahmud, above in the heavens, above the Kaaba. And every time one 70,000, a batch of angels worship, they will never revisit or have the opportunity to worship again. So every day, 70,000 shift continuing. 
So above the Kaaba, we hold that there's Baitul Mahmud, and our, some of our traditions indicate very strongly that Adam was the first one who built the Kaaba, and on the covenant of Abraham, one of his obligations is to establish a house where all of his future generations will worship. One God. So, so, so would you say that you said that it's a uh, house of God? The, this, this, uh, this house. Yeah, but not just a house of God, but it's a house that has to s symbolize monotheism. It is 100% a symbol of monotheism. It's also a symbol to commemorate Abraham as part of our religion, and he is the Khalil of Allah. He was the beloved of Allah, and we accept him and we love him and we adore him just as we love and adore abraham moses jesus and muhammad he is part of our traditions and this is why i said to you before many prophets many men have came and claimed prophethood and they fell off the race they're out they're nowhere to be remembered now many men has tried to start new religions and they all fail and you said you said to me yes that is true but there are some that survive yes a lot of them a few of them survive but of those who survive they survive because they support polytheism and they support idolatry and this is why i said to you our religion they survive because they support polytheism for that country you just said about the reason why islam survives yes it, yes right so well, this is the decree. It's the decree of God. Satan will rule, will reign for a period of time, and God will reign for a period of time. But if you look at it carefully, you will see. Yes, if you look at it carefully, you will see. Monotheism is the aim, is the primary primary aim of serving God. You cannot serve God with anything other than monotheism. And the purest form of monotheism is Islam. Islam is the purest form of monotheism. And you agree with that. You, you totally agree with that. And any time we give the creation of God, God's qualities, that's where we step into the zone of idolatry and shirk. Now, now you said that uh, the first mosque, which is the Kaaba, yeah? Um, is the home of God. Monetism. Yeah. Not polytheism. Eh? Yeah. But how so so in the same way that you would say to Christians, yeah, um, how is it that Jesus um, how is it that God the Father is is uh, Jesus' father? Yeah? Because you are saying that the uh, God can't have a son. Yeah? How is it I'm saying to you now that Allah can have a home? How how can he have how can he have a home? How can he cover these homes? Do you know why it's called the house of God? How do you do you know why it's called the house of God? Do you know why? It's called the house of God because it's that house dedicated to serving God. So it's a phrase. A terminology that is meant to mean this place is purely for serving him for knowing him and serving him that's called the house of god it's the house where we so, go so to he serve god he in it. He oh don't be ridiculous of course not i've, I've thought you pass over that level a long time no, no, but what come I'm on trying, no, no, no. don't let me down man what, what i'm trying to show you is the same ridiculous uh, uh, ridiculous um, statements that Muslims will also make towards pe people that say they're Christians. How is it that God, how is it that uh, the Father had a son? It's not literally. So, in, in the same way that you're saying that the, um, the mosque, the first mosque, the Kaaba, is the home of God. Well, how can it be the home of God if, if God doesn't dwell in it? Yeah? So, so, so the next time. You don't have to. A house could be your house and you don't live in it you own it no, yeah, yeah. But, but, but the next time that a christian says um jesus is the son of god then don't 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 say how can you be the son of god god doesn't have a son in the same way in the same don't way don't you believe the father and the son existed at the same time no i don't well normally I the son comes only... after the father no 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 no, no, no. i don't i don't believe that they exist at the same time 
Do you believe the sun was created? Yes. Um, I believe that the sun was created. So the, was That's why time. I say that I don't follow But, but Nathan, Nathan has evolved and grown into a very strong position against idolatry. Oh, okay. So okay. He, yeah. he doesn't really sit with the traditional New Testament. He, no, no, and no, no, his no. knowledge is growing as well. It's, it's, not, it's not the New Testament that's the problem. It's religion that is the problem. See, so if, if the holy books are here, yeah. and a million people pick up this holy book and start to try and interpret what they're reading, yeah, it's not the book that's wrong. It's the people, it's the religion that they've titled Christianity. That's not the truth. So if you're believing what those millions of people believe, if you're believing what they believe, then you've fallen away from what the truth is. But Nathan, we have to come to a closure. We have to come to a closure. It doesn't lead to God. And Brother Naz, you can help us with this closure. That it is utter falsehood for anyone to assume that the pilgrimage of Hajj is equal to idolatry because but, but you believe that the the stone fell from heaven which you say is a physical place and then you've also said is that idolatry i believe that's idolatry how because then you're saying that god can also be physical i'm not saying god is physical no, no, and i'm not saying no, no, because no, but, it's still no, but you, the, the, all right. So, so, so are you aware? Are, are you aware? In heaven, are, are you aware? Are you aware? I mean, it's a long stretch you're pulling, right? You're pulling a long stretch, meaning to say you're trying to make something out which is clearly not apparently there. You know very well that the Quran is deeply rooted in the condemnation of all forms of idolatry. So I've been very so I, I was been has been very honest with you, and I said to you I was a Christian born in a Christian family, raised as a Christian, practicing Christianity. I've opened up a lot to you and I've said to you, clearly, honestly, Islam does not support any form of idolatry or shirk. I made that very clear to you. Now, what I'm trying to say to you, my beloved brother, is this. We believe that Adam was in paradise. And Adam came down from paradise and he lived on earth. We believe that. And we also believe that Adam, peace be upon him, was the first man. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Did you say Adam was in paradise and then came down to the earth? Yes, we believe that. I mean, I mean, I mean, came down to the earth? Come, yeah. Okay, so where was he created? Adam was created in paradise. Okay. It's, it's an interpretation because it, it's basically the word Jannah, which is usually translated as paradise, technically means garden. So the Mufassirun, uh, many of them understood it to refer to some place upon earth. Oh, like, so it wasn't uh, a, a garden, but but whether it's upon earth or in some other uh, dimension, uh, that's not really the point. Um, the point is about the story of Adam. And but 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 if he said receiving forgiveness, if, if our brother says that Adam, but see, that's why I, I I don't agree. I I agree that everybody has to have one doctrine, one mind, and one understanding. Yeah. So if he said something that's slightly wrong, you've got to correct him. because he said that Adam was in paradise not a and brought point. <laughs> and, yeah. and brought to heaven. I mean I mean brought yeah. to earth. So, so, so was, was he not the... created from the earth? Yeah? The Quran says he was created from dust, from, yeah. from the rub or, or dust. Which is where? In uh, paradise or here? The paradise one or here? Um, is it, is it yeah, but, well, it is. It is. The Prophet, peace be upon him, says that when Allah was going to create a man, he called Jibril, angel Gabriel, and he commissioned Gabriel with a task to go throughout the earth and gather mud. And Jibril gathered four groups of mud. Black clay, white clay, red clay, and yellow clay. And Allah took. Is this in the Quran? This is from the teachings of our Prophet Muhammad. Okay, it's so from our. So it's not in the Hadith. It's in the Quran. No, no it's, it's from the teachings. The Quran, no, it's from the Hadith. Um, so the Prophet peace be upon him oh, is, taught us. It's, yeah. it's been reported that the Prophet yeah. said. Yeah, but I, I believe oh, okay, it. Okay, I, okay. I I strongly so believe it. It's not actually in the Quran. It's no, 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 it's not in the Quran. No. Okay. Yeah. But, but the point what I'm trying to say to you, this is what I believe that the Prophet, peace be upon him, 
taught us that when Allah was going to create mankind, he called Jibreel and he instructed Jibreel to bring mud to him and Jibreel bring four groups of mud, white, black, yellow and red. And Allah created man, Adam, from these four groups of mud. Therefore, hence the reason why in the procreation of human beings, you'll find the red man, you'll find the yellow man, you'll find the black man, and you'll find the white man. Right, because man was created from four groups of mud. Okay. And so what, what color yeah. then was Adam, the first man, that was created from the white, black, red and we, we believe, most of our experts on Tafsiri believe he was a colored man, like that of the a black, black man. The red Color, a black man. However, however, what we want to do is come to a closure to the point where the Hajj is not idolatry. And when we say by to Allah, by to Allah, the house belonging to Allah is the owner. Allah is the owner of this house because this is a place in which God is worshipped singularly, single out for worship. He's not worshipped with others. So this is why it's called Baytullah. Now, you're trying to equate that or draw some kind of parallel acceptance for people who say, God have a son. Now, no, no, I don't. sorry? I, 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 don't, I don't say that. You don't say God have a son? I say that God has a son, just like we're all supposed to be sons of God, in that same sense. I'm not saying that God um created jesus like he like a literal sperm or something yeah like yeah that. we don't say that i don't say that. Yeah. i don't say that. you know i'm not all right so we, we've gone past that but what i'm trying to say if in the future you're going to accuse islam of idolatry you have to come with some solid facts and if you're on the part of truthfulness if you are on the part of truthfulness seeking the truth you must only speak the truth and i'm saying to you for years of experience Islam is the staunchest and the strongest opponent to all forms of idolatry, tyranny, all forms of hedonism. But it's, idol it's idolatry to say that God can be physical. Correct? Or not? Yeah, it's idolatry, yeah. But you said that in that day, okay, in that resurrection day, God can and will Reveal allow, himself. Reveal, uh, allow people to see him if he wants. If I, he wants. Yes, yes, I said that. So then that means that now he's physical. No, it doesn't mean that. Oh, it doesn't? No. So then how will they see him? Exactly. How will they see him does not mean to say he is physical. Now, for example, the knowledge we have of God is not extensive. We have knowledge of God, but it's not extensive meaning to say all the details of God and it's impermissible it's not correct of us to step into a boundary to try to define God in terms of shape and color and space we enter into territories of idolatry so we don't go there we do not go there you don't go there I don't go there what we do we stop when God says and when he's when he resurrect human beings on the day of judgment Whosoever he choose to reveal himself to, he will do that in whichever way he find befits his majesty. However way God choose to do that. Now, I said to you before, I don't have the knowledge of those details. I don't have that knowledge. But I'm thinking you're seeking a way to accuse Islam of idolatry. And if you're trying to do that, you're going to hurt your reputation. You're going to hurt your, credi your credibility no, because, because, it, because, because the, you're hurting the, the, yourself. The, the problem that I have. No, you're going to hurt yeah, yourself. Don't do it. Is that he, Muslim people say that this stone has fallen from heaven. Uh, this physical stone has fallen from heaven. Yeah? That means that you're saying that heaven is a physical place. That stone is as physical as we are. All right, let me ask you a question. Do you believe that quail and manna? fall from heaven to feed the children of Israel? Get your phone wait, 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 and so go sorry. back to your book. What, what, what is this in? 
the story in Exeter um, yeah. when it was that uh, Israelites in the wilderness for I think is it forty years? Yeah. Um, and he feeds them with food from heaven. Did you know that story? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So if he's disputing the stone, then he's going to dispute quail and matter. And he already disputed. He said to me, heaven is not a physical place. It's an imagination. But what, what was this food from heaven? But, um, is uh, it qu quail, uh, quail and manna? Quail and manna. Yeah. Uh, Selwa and manna. And, and basal and thum. And it, 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 the, 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 the gist of it is that God fed the children of Israel with food from heaven, from above. This is a spiritual. Just a minute, slow down, slow down. Before you start going on to hurt yourself, don't hurt yourself, read your scriptures. Because you're hurting your repetition, your credibility. Just read your scriptures first, study them, and then you can make up whatever one you want to make up. Also, the Quran mentions the disciples as well. Allah fed them as well, food from heaven as well. But Jesus says, I am that food from heaven. So no, if, before you go there, read your scriptures before you hurt yourself. Because uh, you're going to be hurting yourself. But what old, what old testament? Uh, it's an uh, Exodus, but I can't remember the reference. But, uh, it's a well known story. So yeah. But the, the question is, what are we trying to say? Somewhere if he's trying to say it is ridiculous, or he is trying to say it is idolatry to assume that a stone from heaven would fall. I'm Could saying to him, interpret the um, as, well as being a meteorite. Huh? A, a meteorite. Okay. What does that mean? Um, like from space. The heaven can also refer to space as well. Who said that? No. Is that speculation? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I mean, speculation. The list of speculation goes on and on. Exodus 16, 4, 20. Uh, then the Lord said to Moses, I will cause food to fall from the sky. Uh, this food will be for you to eat. Every day the people should go out and gather the food they need that day. I will do this to see if they will do what I tell them. Every, every day the people will gather only enough food for one day. But on Friday, when the people prepare their, their food, they will see that they have enough food for two days. For no My argument to him is if he's trying to say the stone coming from heaven or from the sky is idolatry, then that's idolatry as well. So it's not idolatry, it's a long shot he's trying to put. He's trying to put. So, no, but, no, but, no, but, no, but, no, but what says, I'm saying, Nathan, you it cannot. Say, it says from the sky. It falls from the sky, right. not from heaven in the sense. See, when, when I say look to the heaven, the heaven also means the sky. All right, it doesn't mean where the angels and and uh, you know the heavenly hosts and beings. It, it, it does mean the okay, say. all right, it's, okay, that's fine. That means the sky, oh, okay, and God can okay. do anything, so right, He can right. allow food to drop from, from the sky, sky and yeah. from his people. All right, that's fine, <laughs> and is that idolatry? What, the, the, the food fell from the sky? No, that's not a good It's but not. For you to it's, say just slow down. the stone is slow, fallen so from slow down. Slow heaven, down. not the slow. sky, but heaven. All right, slow down. Slow down. Right. So it's not idolatry, food falling from the sky? No. Right. That's what? How would you call that? That's a, that's a miracle. All right, okay, cool. That's a miracle. Yeah. And if we were to say it's a miracle that is aswed, this black stone came down. Not just from the sky. Uh, slow down, heaven. slow down. Wait, yeah, I get, I get your point. I, I, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, we did correct that before. I said, I, I, say, I said, I corrected that before. I said, the throne of God is above the seven heavens. And the throne of God overarch the seven heavens. So when you say throne, what do you mean by throne? What do I mean by this? The throne, the throne of God. God doesn't say. The throne of God. Now, I don't, I don't have those details. And I said, as I said to you before, the knowledge of the unseen is only little has been given to us. 
So to pursue the details or to make mockery out of the details no, 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 is blasphemy. I'm not saying that you are. I'm saying this, I'm cautioning myself. Yeah. That, and, and also we're on camera. So if someone, if we were to give some brief description of what God said regarding his throne, his arsh, his heavens, and someone decide to make a mockery of, out of it, seeking details, I'm saying we do not take that route of blasphemy as going into blasphemy. I don't go there. I stop myself. We don't go that far. But what I'm trying to say to you, you should really come to some kind of conclusion looking at Islam, looking at the Quran with a different, fresh set of eyes because you're making some ridiculous statements and you're trying to say that Islam supports idolatry through Hajj or through the, the black zone. And, do you understand okay, my point? But what I'm trying to say, Nathan, saying, don't you know, get ridiculous. You, you, don't hurt yourself. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but what you do not become obnoxious. What you You're going to hurt yourself. Is that what you're, 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 you're saying? Oh, well, okay, I don't understand this bit, but I still believe it to be true, and I just don't understand the details that, that uh, God. I don't has. say I don't understand. That's not what I'm saying. You're not with it, man. You're losing grip of yourself. No, 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 because you said that you don't um, know the exact details. I said I don't know. Yes. yes. So, so that is not yes. understanding. No, no, I don't know. When you have information, you can understand the information, you can discuss the information, right? You can and analyze the information. information in slow down, world. slow down, Holmes. I said to you, I do not know. Yeah. Not that I don't, I don't know. You have to know first. If you have to, you need knowledge first. You can have knowledge and not understand the knowledge. You can have language, you, you, have, you can have language but you don't understand the language. I'm saying to you, the knowledge that you ask me of, I do not know it. So if I do not know it, you cannot pursue understanding because I don't know it. It means it doesn't have the information. I don't okay. have it. Yeah, yeah. That's fair. That's so then it's not up for conversation. That's fair. But for, I'm going back to the exact point of that stone. This is the main point I want. The stone, yeah. not falling from just the sky, but you're saying that it's fallen from a heavenly realm that yeah. God has created for maybe angels, so wh the, the where, people where, that are going to be resurrected. This, this is where you're from saying from that, that it's fallen. Stone was pulled down from heaven. Is that based upon Tafsir? It is in books of Tafsir okay. and it's in a lot of the traditional uh, prophetic traditions. I see. Yes. But the, the, the question is, he's pulling a fast one to try to say, no, no, a stone coming concerned. from heaven. No, a stone falling from heaven sincere. is idolatry. Yeah, sure, yeah. No, but how is that sincere? I don't see the logic. Like exactly, it's a big disconnect. If it's from heaven for argument's sake. But, so, so, uh, so, there's no logic so behind it, Nas. <clears throat> but it could also saying? be interpreted as meaning like from the sky and not, not necessarily heaven so it doesn't it, come it, from it. so so you're saying it, it's, it's not, it, it's, it's not in the quran itself but at the same time i don't really see the logic that even if it, even if, it, if we, we had like certain information that it was from heaven that therefore then it's uh, not idolatry idolatry that's a bit ridiculous man saying, well, no no what you're saying is this is this stone is special I don't believe that any stone is special. Yes, I don't believe that anything is special. Is Nothing special. is special. That's fine. Except that, from God right. himself. No, no, but yeah, but the no, question is, no, if you believe I'm that, saying. Nathan, I'm with you. But yeah. what I'm trying to say, for you to draw this as a conclusion to, to say this is idolatry, you fail because, because you... Because you, you're now saying that the stone is special, like it's, it's come my, from my friend, if something, the heavenly realm. If you don't believe something is special, this is, this is saying if you don't this believe in something special, idolatry. If you don't believe something is special, I get that. I have no issues with that. All right. So we, I believe the remnants of the family of Moses is sacred. I believe in sacred relics. Sacred relics. So the, remnant, the remnant of Moses' family. Yes. So Moses had a staff. And I believe the staff of Moses. I don't believe that the, the, the staff is special. I'm, I'm but, with but, you. But, okay, okay, I'm with you. Yeah. Okay, you don't believe it. I'm not it's forcing you to. The power of God Himself okay. allows that staff to turn into a snake. I, I, that I agree with. Yeah. I also agree with that. 
We're not disagreeing with that. I don't, I don't, I don't think that is special. Uh, that's fine. I heard you when you said it the first time. You don't believe anything is special. That's fine. But I believe by the power of God, the power of God and the will of God, the staff of Moses is a special staff. That's my belief. Right. And I also believe in sacred relics. Uh, it's my belief. I believe in sacred relics. So I believe the Kaaba is a sacred place. I believe Mecca to be a sacred place. I believe some places on the earth are sacred and special to other places. So, for example, I believe the prophets are better than all other men. And the righteous men and the saints are better than other men. And the believers are better than disbelievers. And I believe the hypocrites are the worst scums in the world. And I believe the house of God is better than all other houses. And I believe Mecca and Medina and um, parts of uh, Palestine. I believe in sacred lands. The lands where the prophets walk. The lands of Mesopotamia. I believe they are sacred lands. I hold those beliefs. You don't have to. But I know but very who's well. Who's told you to believe just, what just that? Say. Who's told you to believe that? When, that's, when that's you what I'm take about religion. When you take your time, when you take your time, and you go through your scriptures, you will come to realize there are some places in the scriptures that talk about holy lands. Yeah. You, you will come to realize that. So I'm not arguing with you on that. Yeah. And holy mount. Holy mountains like Mountur. Oh, nation. Oh. Yeah, Mountur. Oh, okay. Allah talk about by, by the holy mounts. Mm -hmm. And when Allah told um, Musa, Moses, take off thy shoes for thou art on okay. holy ground. Now, yeah. yes. now, I don't want him to believe that. But I'm saying I believe that. When he get deeper in knowledge, he will come to realize that some of what I believe have some kind of foundation. Yeah, right. sure. So if this he don't want to believe in all these things, that's his prerogative no, no, no. but what i'm trying to say as naz is very fair and now says he can't see the logic in you making a statement that hajj or the black stone is equal to idolatry by the principle of definition so if something is idolatry it's idolatry based on this definition and the definition that we use in to say the black stone is idolatry is because we take qualities of god and give it to the black stone you don't hurt yourself. No, no, no. You're hurting yourself. Don't do it. You know Jacob anointed oil on a, on a stone? Like he anointed a stone in, in the book of Genesis. He, put, he poured holy oil on it. And holy water. And, and then that place becomes like a sacred place? Yeah. Or and we believe in holy like water as well. Or, yeah. We believe in holy water. Okay. 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 The Zamzam water is holy water. Jacob was the the rain water okay. is holy water. Yeah. We believe in holy water. So we believe in holy things. I believe in it. And I think as you get deeper into knowledge, you will come to realize some things are sacred and sanctified and holy yeah. on this earth. We some lands are pure. Every human life is holy or sacred. That's why it's prohibited for us to take yeah. life. And the best lives are the prophet's lives. So, 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 okay. Best men are the prophets. Are you meant to love your enemies in, in your holy, holy school? Yes, or, yes. I'll tell you how I love... Is it, is it sanctioned to, to um, you know, make war against, against, against people well, I mean, for that, any time? Listen, God loved the people of Noah. You, you with me or you're not with me? Yeah, yeah. Right. So Noah was a believer and majority of his family were believers. And the people of Noah were disbelievers. God loved the people of Noah. And this is why he did what he did to the people of Noah. So God loved Lot. Lot was of God. He was a prophet of God. And the people disbelieve in Lot. They disbelieve in God. And God loved them. That's why he did. He sent fire and brimstone upon them. Out of love for them. Uh, are you, you with me? So the same way how God loved the people of Lot. And the same way how God loved the people of Noah. I love them the same way. Yeah, yeah. All right. But you believe in hellfire? Yeah. Paradise? You believe in paradise? You believe in hellfire? I believe uh, in in uh, eternal life. Would you say eternal life is, is heaven? 
we believe in eternal life. But what I'm trying to say, to answer your question about love and love and love. The same way how God loved the people of Noah, what he did to the people of Noah, you really fully understand the process of drowning? Have you Drown, processed? Drown. Yeah, drowning. Have you ever processed that in your mind? Like, in terms of drowning, like, what that is? Yeah, the sight of drowning, the pain of being drunk. Have you ever submerged yourself underwater swimming and you're running out of here? You, you, can you imagine the process of how that water goes through your lungs? I'm going to... All right, cool. Yeah. All right. Thanks a lot, Naz. Thank you again, yeah. yeah. Have you ever processed that? Yeah. yeah right. It's, it's, it's so right. So when, when the God of Noah drowned the people of Noah, women, children, cattle, and destroyed the land, God loved them so much that he drowned them. I love them the same way God loved them. So, so you're saying God loved them and drowned them? And what happened with the people of Lot? Fire and brimstone. And you see how God loved them? I love them the same way how God loved them. So, you, have, you, have you processed the concept of fire and brimstone? You haven't? I, I don't know. I, like, the way that you're writing it. Like, the, the question... Fire and brimstone. Fire and br You process drowning. Yeah. That's, that's Death by die. drunk. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah but die. you understand how that water goes through your lungs. And how it you know, bursts all the, all the in, internal eruption bursts. Okay, so how horrifying that, it is. That's love of, that's the love of God. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's love. Yeah, yeah. I like that love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Because God is always justified. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm with that love. Yeah. And I'm with that too. Exactly. Yeah. That's what we say. Now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm with that too. I'm with that too. I'm with that too. Yeah? I, I, I don't even right. think that I don't um, that I think God is like this. This yeah. God that isn't gonna cause things to happen um, by His own will, like death. God is justified because yeah. He is just. Yeah. He is the most just, yeah. and He's always justified. So I don't need to defend God. God is always justified. That's what I'm saying. 100%. Yeah. So, 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 so would you say that if God said to kill someone, that's justified? Yeah, if he says it. Whatever God says, it's on. Cool. What did God do to the people of Pharaoh? The people who believe in Pharaoh and follow he Pharaoh. Took, he took their, their right. Did he drown Pharaoh as well? Yeah. Right? And you process, you process in your mind how drowning is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be painful. Oh, exactly. Uh, uh, and God loved them. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I yeah. love them too. See, uh, this, is the, the, this is the sort of problem that I'm having here because I've spoken to Hashim and I've spoken to you and I've spoken to other Muslims as well. And when I spoke to Hashim last week, there's a video out there. They can go and check it on Dawa Wise. It's, uh, it's how Christian twists his mind or something like this. Yeah. He said that uh, uh, one, God doesn't create evil. Yeah. And he also said that. Uh, oh, thank you. Good. Yeah. Welcome to Snarter. You're welcome to join in. Oh, no, I just came to say hi there. Yeah, oh, so yeah. 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 And, and he also said. Um, that God didn't take the first um, the firstborn sons of the, the people of Egypt, yeah. And he also said that God will not um, tell people to go and kill other people because in the Bible, because he brought a scripture saying, um, "Kill the Amalekites," which is which is like the tribe of people um, from Eden, yeah. And um, uh, he was killed man woman, uh, infant, a like child, and like, donkey and everything, yeah? Killed him. And he said that that's not justice. That's not justice in God. Because he's saying to go and kill them. But I believe exactly how you just said to me. That it's justice if God says to do it. God, God's will is, is the only way. Right? 
So if God says to do something, it's always justified. Then it's justified. Always. It's, it's, it's justified. Have you studied the Quranic? I'm saying have you ever you studied the Quranic story? Yeah. yeah. Have you studied the Quranic story on Moses and Kedar? And, and Kedar. Kedar. Uh, who's, who's that? Kedar. Have you, you haven't studied it? In your free time, go and do a little bit of study on the story of Moses and Kedar. And Moses was sent to Kedar by God to learn wisdom. And when he asked to follow and learn wisdom from Kedar, Kedar was teaching Moses patience and mysteries. The story is long but beautiful. I advise you to get it and read it. And when you read it, it will confirm to you how God is always justified. Always justified. Right? And God is most just and always justified. So my thing to you is that if you understand that story, it will resonate with your belief that God is always justified. And something Even if he says kill man, woman, child, uh, and all of that. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. I, I, I agree. But Hashim, Hashim, your brother, yeah, he said that's not that's not that's not that's not God. God will never God will never say this. God will never do that. And that's what I'm trying to say. Your thoughts are not his thoughts. He, his mind is not your mind. Yeah? Complete difference. How do we know that God said that? Well, how, how, do, we, how do we know God said uh, Moses and, uh, what is it, Kitten? How do, how do we know? Right. No, but, but, but it's also in the Bible. No, 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 no. I'm saying, you said, oh, well, how do we know God said that? I'm yeah. saying that's in the Bible. It's, how in, do we know it's in the Old that? Testament. Oh, sorry, brother. No, go ahead. Um, how do we know that specific passage yeah. is preserved authentically? And how do we know it's not a form of like Israeli supremacism in the fact that they're trying to denigrate all the surrounding tribes well, well, and any, trying to make it look like they've completely destroyed the other tribes? Well, and anyone, anyone, anyone else can say about um, the Quran in terms of, oh well, you know, um, why? Why, why has God killed the people of, yeah, of Lot, like you said? Oh, um, <laughs> if he's loved them, you know, why would he do that? Many people from different well, where, walks of life say the exact same thing. Where in the Quran does it it's say? That, it's, that's our belief. Yeah, but where in, in the Quran, for sure, earthquakes happen, tsunamis happen, right? But yeah. it is no instruction in the Quran and Sunnah to go out and explicitly individuals to go and slaughter children and yeah. That's the difference. In, yeah, in the Old Testament. Because in the Old Testament, in the, the story the of Malachi, Malachi, yeah. Yeah, it's like literally telling them to go and slaughter. Yeah, just giving and, permission. And, and to that's people. justified. That's just the way it's because God said to do it. So if God says to do something, like we just established, I agree. That's the same God that I believe in. That same love. That's the that's the love. That is the love. God said to go and kill them. So that's what you do. If God said to do it, and God is His word, so if He said to go and do that. You better do it. Just like he said about sacrificing um, yeah, sure, sure. How do you know Abraham God's sacrificing his son. But how do you know God said it in the Old Testament? How do we know that that specific passage has been preserved authentically? In, well, we can say uh, that about yeah, but we can say that about the whole of the word, the whole of the scripture. But how do we know that the Quran is is, 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 is true, not just men just putting it down? How, everyone can say this. Absolutely, but that, that, we, have to, we have to. We have to. Everyone can say that, and everyone can challenge for it. But I would advise you to look into because, the Quran and, and, yeah, but, and, and this, this is this is why I'm saying yeah. your mind yeah. is not the same mind as God. Your yeah. thoughts, the way that you think, is yeah. not the same way that He thinks. He's holy. He He can do any. He gives life and He takes it. Yeah. Any life that leaves this earth is by the will of Him, yeah. not by anyone else. So He He can say to a human being, "Go and take this life." Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I'm he saying. Can, he can sorry, sorry, guys. No, 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 no. Yeah, we're yeah. But so, yeah. So, so, so that's what I'm saying. Your thought yeah. is not his thought. Yeah, no, Just because you don't feel like it's hard, it doesn't sound right. Yeah. No, I'm, not, I'm not saying. I'm not saying. I'm doesn't not mean it. that it's not true. Yeah. I'm not. We've got to bend to him, not yeah. us. Bend God to, 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 to how we feel. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm saying. I understand, I agree completely with what you're saying. Yeah. Like, what God says is what's true, no matter what, right? But I'm saying, how do we know that 
God actually said those words. We have to look at the historicity of the Old Testament. But, but, but that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. We're going around in that circle because you're saying yeah. how can how how do we know that that's true? Because you know he said kill man, woman, child, and and, and child, yeah. and, and the animal. Yeah, yeah you say that. Yeah. yeah, but I know you're bringing that up because you don't feel right with. What that says? No, no, no. I'm not, I'm not bringing that up for that reason. So, like, you can, you can, like I said, you can say that about any other part of the scripture. You're, 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 you're bringing your own thoughts and your own feelings to the scripture. I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with that quotation. Personally, I don't have a problem with it. Um, and I think you and I agree that. The ways of man may seem fair unto themselves, yeah. but the ways of the Lord is yeah. always justified. Yeah, always. And this is why I advise you to read that book on Moses and Kedem. And in what that, that? Kedem, Kedem, I just got that. Yeah. yeah. Our message. Yeah. 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 So if you read the story of Moses and Kedem, it will help solidify the exact same thing that you're saying. Right. And what that story does say to you is that man would look at an action and draw an opinion. But with God, there are hidden mysteries. And when God reveals his reasons for what he, why he does whatever he does, then we will understand. But our understanding is so limited because we have limited knowledge. But God is all-knowing. And because he's all-knowing, he makes decisions that man don't understand. And because we don't understand it, we don't agree with it. Yeah. And sometimes we even challenge God, right, out of ignorance, yeah. shared ignorance yeah. and arrogance. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm thinking that if you read that story of Moses and Kittle on the authority of Ibn Kathir, he cited it, you will find the story resonate with your beliefs. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. But that is... The, the, the reason why I bring it up is because with a lot of other Muslims, like last week I saw to Muslim, he brought up that point yeah. of killing man, woman and infant yeah. and the animals. The ways to the man is, is, is completely different. To the ways of the law? To the ways of the law. Because the law sees the big picture. He sees the big picture. And what picture do we see? We see our own. Small, tiny a, dot. A, small, a needle. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, so... You can't, you can't then say and bring up that scripture and say, oh, well, God will never do that. How do you know? You're not the Lord. Mm, yeah, yeah, sure. You know, you're not the Lord. So how do you know that God wouldn't say, kill man, woman, child? Sure. How would you, how would yeah, you know? sure, sure. Uh, thanks for that question. Um, so what I'm trying to say is that in the entirety of the Quran and in the entirety of the Sunnah, there's no explicit like um, demand from God to go and slaughter innocents for individuals per se, right? So like there's no, in any context, even um, back then and back now, right? So there's no situation where we're allowed to go and slaughter innocents or people before us were allowed to go and slaughter innocents. The difference is, like non combatants right? So people who are... Um, so what I'm talking about is in the Old Testament, which is the passage, I think it's the Amalekites mm, we're yeah. talking about. So in that situation, there is a direct command from God to go and slaughter innocents, right? So I'm saying, if God says that, I can't argue who's, against God, right? I'm saying, I agree, I agree. If I, I agree with brother. If I, God said that, I can't argue against God. But what I can do is try and see if that was actually said by God, right? I have the right to do that, right? And I have the right to look into the historicity of the Old Testament and, and, so and be like, is this passage actually from God? Well, I don't think it's far-fetched because... If you look at the story of Noah, yeah. the people of Noah, there were flock and animals and cattle. Yeah. And, you know, Noah said to Allah, yeah. do not leave one alive. Yeah. For I fear that if you leave one, he may corrupt following generations. Right. So the, 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 in terms of a consistency of pattern. So you see, look at what happened with the people of uh, Lot when God punished the people of Lot with fire and brimstone. Yeah. If you look at what happened with the people of yeah, Pharaoh. Yeah, I'm guessing there was children in... Oh, yeah. obviously, yeah. obviously. So, right. Yeah. But So my, my thing is this. Are they not innocent? Well, first, it's not my judgment. Yeah, okay. Their innocence is not my judgment. Yeah. So if God take you or me, 
God going to send a punishment on the evil people. And we were passing through that city. And we died. That does not mean to say it's a bad sign for us. It just means to say we die at that place. So we will be judged to the best of our intentions. But what I'm trying to say is that in a history, we see a religious history of God punishing the people of Noah. God punishing the people of Lot. We see God punishing the people of Pharaoh. And we see uh, plagues coming in upon even children that affected them. So there's a history of how God does things. But in the end, the final analysis, God is always justified in whatever he does. And I think sometimes um, in the, the things that we ask God for, in the things that we want, and the times we stumble, we will question God of these things. We will question God. Um, but but my, my argument to that, that statement is that I don't see it far-fetched from history. And if you read the story of Kidder, where Kidder killed a child and he buried, a wall fell on treasures that was buried. And when Kidder explained to Moses, because Moses was rebelling against his teacher, and when the teacher explained to him the reasons, then he said, ah, oh, that's right. So that's why I said, read the story of Moses and Kidder and you will get uh, a, so, a complete understanding. So is, is Kedar, is Kedar, um, was he like a, right, a prophet or a right? According person? to some of the experts, they say he's equal to Melchizedek. Okay. Yeah. So he's kind of like that kind of a figure. Yeah. Right. Okay. It's like a saint. And he killed, you're saying that he killed... I don't want to break it. You'll have to read it. No, no, it's going to spoil it. Because the story of a sequence, and it's a bit long, yeah. and you need to process it. Okay. That's brilliant. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't even know that, yeah? Because I'm not Muslim and I haven't actually read that story, yeah? But would you not say it's hypocritical? For then a Muslim to then say, bring out the Old Testament about killing man, woman, and child. Just, just on that story of Kiddo, I understand what you're saying, and that's a good point. But there's also other interpretations of the story of Kiddo, as in it being a dream as well so th there's multiple interpretations of that story itself so if you take that approach then it's not hypocritical right if it's a dream to Musa right so that's one way of going about it um sorry yeah, that's just why I wanted to okay. point out I don't want to go into much and just sorry I just on that was a dream or, or not I'm, I'm not going there yeah. because what is going to spoil it for you is going to plant seeds in your head is going to spoil it I think you should read it on a clean page without any pre notion so for example before I read the Bible, before I first touched the Bible, I was already told and accepted Jesus to be God. So when I start reading the Bible, I interpret it with the pre-notion that Jesus is God. So the story of Kedar, I don't want to give you any pre-notions. When you read it, you're reading it loaded. Right. I want you to read it from a pure. So that's why I don't want to break it uh, between between the um, story of Moses and Kedah. But my thing is, God is always justified. So we can have a rant if we want, and when the truth comes to us, we can change the truth and make it metaphorical, we can make it into a dream, but God is always justified. I, I don't have an issue with the authority of God. But if you read this story, I strongly urge you to read this story. Yeah, and you will come to some um, very interesting conclusions. But where we are today, coming back to the original conversation, is that if a person dies on idolatry slash shirk, he will never see God's face, he will never receive God's mercy, nor God's forgiveness. So every believer who is sincere and truthful, he has the obligation to purify himself from all forms of idolatry. So you, as a seeker of truth, you're seeking truth, you're seeking righteousness, you have to choose the path to believe in God in a very, in the way God wants him to, the way God wants you well, to know him. Well, yeah. Right. But Jesus said, okay, I am the door. Yeah? No one gets to the Father but by me. So, when you say about this monotheistic God and, um, uh, you know, you've got to believe in God. One God. 
and not make anyone unique. Equal. Yeah. yeah, yeah, not unique. make anyone yeah. equal. Yeah. You're getting the idea. Yeah. Tim, you need to listen and believe in what all of the prophets said. I believe Jesus, well said. a part of Jesus, was a prophet as well. Yeah, I believe that because yeah. the Bible says. And okay. Sorry, just to interrupt yeah. there. Sorry. Um, if we were alive in Isa Alayhi Salam's time, like Jesus' time, he is the part of God, right? For us. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, 100%. Agree with that. I agree. Mm. I agree with that. 100%. So you can even like contextualize that very statement, right? As in, you can contextualize that very statement. If we agree with that statement being said, we can contextualize it to his time period. Yeah, 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 yeah. 100%. Yeah. I believe Jesus is the prophet of God. Yeah? But I also believe Jesus is God. Now, understanding what i'm saying <laughs> you, i need to break it down right for you yeah, to absolutely. understand where i'm coming from from that state and i agree with you to some extent yeah i agree with you that jesus is god okay well whoa, 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 hold on mm. if you just said you believe that jesus is god see look he's looking yeah, no, very I confused was, I, 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 but I, I, let, let the brother finish his well, statement the very fact that you said that no one can allow you to say that except from God himself. The very fact that you said that and you might even understand something, that little revelation that you might have got, that was not from yourself. That was from above high God himself. Well, you might take and it no back. No, you, 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 you make a comment to me. Yeah. Sounds like a compliment. Yeah. But if I explain what I mean, you yeah. might take it back. Yeah. So don't be too 100%. hasty. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah, yeah. So if I say to you, if I say to you, Nathan, that Jesus is God, yeah. Do you slow down, slow down. Don't get too excited. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I say to you, Jesus is God, yeah. number one, there's a difference between capital G-O-D from common G-O-D. There's a difference. So we're referring to common G-O-D. And if I say Jesus is God, That's he, in the English. Okay. Just slow down. If I say Jesus is common G-O-D, common G-O-D, it means to say people worship him and make him a god now there's a difference between jesus being worshipped as a god and treated as a god and i recognize that i recognize that not denying that but is jesus the capital god is he the god that is all knowing he is not is jesus the god that created everything in the world he is not is Jesus the God that is completely independent? Jesus is not completely independent. But is he that God to whom people worship and make him a God? Yes. Now look, did you know that... You know the Abraham, cow is a God as well in who? India. Who? In India the cow is a God. But that's and you know the rat is a God. Yeah, yeah, because the other nations have God. Yeah. yeah. But they have gods, which are no gods yeah. to the Lord. So in India, you go so, to India, yeah. the cow is a god. But, but, but you know, that's not... Is he capital G-O-D? Well, to them, yes. No, he's not. He could... He's common G-O-D because they make him a god. Okay. So if you make the tree a god, I agree with you, the tree is your god. Yeah. So people have made Jesus their god. The world can, common can G-O-D, god. but like not money. capital G-O-D. Money can become people's god. That's called idolatry. And that, yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not just the materialism. Yeah. Yeah. That's their god. That's their god. Because that's what they live for. That's yeah. what they serve. Yeah. If they serve materialism, they live for the flesh. They yeah. live for self-glorification and their carnal desires. They're heathens. Yeah. And heathenism, it's yeah. a god. Yeah. It's the god of Babylon. I agree. I agree. <laughs> but understanding to, to to say that Jesus is the Lord. In fact, the Bible says. No one can say Jesus is the Lord without having the Holy Ghost. So when I said, when you said, Jesus, yeah, I, I agree with you. Jesus is God. Jesus is God. You weren't even allowed to say that. I wasn't even able to come out of your mouth without the sanction of God allowing you. Mm. You're not able to breathe. You're not able to come to any understanding. You're not able to walk. You're not being able to read but, but, or but you agree without him. You agree that Jesus does not have five key characteristics. Jesus is not perfect. He's not all-knowing. 
You're talking Jesus, about the man. Slow the down. Man slow down. Can't do anything. Talk, talk about however you want it. Yeah. I'm saying to you, Jesus is not perfect. He's not all knowing. He's not independent. The whole of the creation does not rely on Jesus for their existence. And Jesus himself does not know the day of judgment. I agree. The man doesn't know anything. All right. So if the man does not know, yeah, yeah. what part of Jesus knows the day of judgment? The spirit. All right. So let's look at the spirit of Jesus. Right. The spirit of Jesus. What the, what the spirit allows him to see. Sorry? What the spirit allows him, the man, to see. All right. So you have the father. Yeah. You have the son. The son is the father. You have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the father. And also, you have Jesus in flesh, and you have Jesus in spirit. No. Slow down, Holmes. Listen, listen. Get me wrong. Do we agree? You have the Father. Yeah. Do you have the Son existing? Existing where? Does he exist, the Son? Yeah. Good, good. Does the Holy Ghost exist? Well, he, yeah. and the Holy Ghost exists. And in Jesus, there's a flesh Jesus. You're running way... You're, right. But is there a flesh in existence? And is there the allow spirit me, of Jesus in existence? Give, allow me to give this uh, to you. I wanted to say goodbye quickly. Uh, uh, Stay in touch. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Alright. I got, I got to break this down for you to understand. Because you're, you just run, you're, you're, you're running at things that you ain't... You try. You want to understand it, but you can't understand it without me breaking it down. I'm not talking about understanding. I'm talking about acknowledging. You acknowledge five entities. Five entities. You acknowledge. Yes, you did. You acknowledge there's a father in existence. You acknowledge there's a is, son in existence. This is, this is why you should allow me to. to, to break right. It down you also ac acknowledge there's a father. There's a son. There's a Holy Spirit. You also acknowledge in there's Jesus in flesh and Jesus in spirit five entities we agree on now are these five entities now you can explain them as you like yeah allow me to say five it. entities allow, allow, allow me to say it, yeah. yeah carry on it's not it's not five entities. how like many I told you is before, it more no, like i told you before over here over there before we came here, i said the inner man that was in christ jesus which i don't mean literally okay because god is invisible like i've always said i've always told you the truth that god's invisible so when I say inner man, we don't know where this inner is, but it's, it exists, it's there. Yeah? Show me inner man in your scriptures. The concept it of says, inner man says, is a construct no, that is not in the Bible. No, no, because in the, exactly. in the, no, in the New Testament it says um, uh, about the inner room. This is, inner room? Yes, the inner room. So why are you saying inner man? If because the scripture says inner room, how are says, you making it? Says, it says you must go um, into the inner room, meaning inside yourself. Un understand, like, like check yourself and understand on the inner inner side, the real part of you. The scripture the says, you. go no. into the inner room, yes. into yourself, and you are saying now oh, the inner man, which is Jesus. No, no, no. I'm saying, I'm saying, the inner man. Yeah, we all have an inner man. It's called a, it's the spirit. It's the spirit. Yeah, the inner man. Now, what I'm saying is, God the Father. Yeah. The Bible only says God the Father. It doesn't say God the Son. Nowhere can you see in the scripture it says God the Son. But that's what I'm trying to say. Men have created religion because they try to understand the things of God which has not been given to them. And the scriptures now, talk about the Son of God. Yeah, the Son of God, but right. it doesn't say God the Son. Right. Son of, of God. Right. Not so you God agree the that son. Father. Yeah. You agree the Son of God. No. The Father. Why are you God. denying the Son of God? I believe the Father is God. I don't believe the Son is God. Son of God. Son of God. Right. But it is not. Son is not God. The God. It's of. I am of God. Right. As well. But the son of, son of God is God. The son of God is God? No, the son of God is the outer man. Right. Yeah? The inner man is God himself. Which is the, the inner Holy man? Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Because God 
Which Holy God Spirit? And the Holy Jesus Spirit is two titles. Okay, the Father is a title. All right. Holy is a title. All right. The Holy Spirit yeah. is an entity, is a deity. No. Okay, okay. You can say it's a deity, but um, the Holy Spirit is God. That's who he is. He is the Holy Spirit. Right. It's not separate. So God, God. Right. God is Holy Spirit. Right. If the, if the Holy Spirit is God, then you don't need the word God. All you need is one word. Is he the Holy Spirit? Is he God? All right. I have a jacket. This is my jacket. All right. You with me? Right. Do I need to call my jacket another name other than my jacket? No, you don't. No. Right. No. So we're trying to keep things simple. Yeah. Right. God the Father yeah. and the Holy Spirit. Is it two separate entities or is it one entity? Not two separate. One entity. One. We have but the this Son is of not, God. The is the God Son of is, God. The Father is not different to in nature. This is, the, this is what I'm trying to explain to you. In nature, yeah, you must understand what, es what the essence and nature of God is. Essence and nature means the same thing. And we search this and we clarify What's this. the nature of God? The nature of God is spirit. And me and Hashim, a few weeks ago, we clarified this. I got my phone out. We searched what nature means. We searched what uh, essence means. And it means the same thing. These two words meaning the same thing. Okay? Okay. So, God is Holy Ghost. These are not two different things. It's just two different titles. Yeah? God, Holy Spirit. Uh, Creator, Holy Spirit. Uh, Father, Holy Spirit. These are two different titles. It doesn't mean that Father is here, God is here, Holy Spirit is here, and another one's here. These are two different titles. God has many Nathan, are names. you hearing yourself? God has many are, names. Are you really hearing yourself? Yeah. I'm are you really myself. listening to I'm, yourself? I'm listening. I'm You're like, listening I to yourself. Completely understand. Completely Nathan, understand are you really li listening to yourself? I completely, 100% understand. You know, I give you credit for taking nonsense and trying to make sense out of nonsense. I give you credit. I even give you stars it, for doing look, it. it, it you, you're doing a you, you do, you're doing a job, trying to take nonsense and make sense out of it. The question is this. God said, pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. And, and no one is persecuting you. That's a false flag. No, 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 it's a it false is, flag. Because, Who's persecuting you? Because what you've said just now, would you say this to your father? Would you say this to your mother? Would you say this to your, your sister? Would you say this to your own children? That Listen, if my children take your narrative, and try to ascribe what you are ascribing to God, I would probably even go further. I would even go further. <laughs> Nathan, I love you, and I have what is love? huge. What is love? I have a huge amount of hope and belief that one day you will be right where God wants you to be. I'm, I'm right with you. I know God. I'm you don't know God. I, you I know only God. know. You only know. I keep his command. You only know. I keep his command. You only know what you read and accept in the Bible. That's all you know. You don't, you don't know God outside of that. You take away the Bible from you and he ask you about God. You wouldn't know what you're talking about. You're gonna start making up 100%. all kind of stuff. Like the rest of the world, nobody would know God. Without, no, that's not true. No one. No, no. no. That's See, not true. And that's what we differ. No one would know God without. Um, the without holy, the Bible, the holy, the holy scriptures, the holy, yeah, hundred without the Bible. Without but the I, I know scriptures. God. I it's know God without God the Bible. Chose a people to then write these um, holy, holy words down, which is from God. That's a self-proclamation. See, you don't really believe in the prophets the way that you're supposed to, because if you did, then you would believe that, that I, I, the I, words that were written. Do I believe in Moses? Yes, I do. But you're saying, do I believe in Abraham? I believe in Abraham. The, you're saying that you don't need the word of God, which is. I didn't say I don't need, but what I'm trying to no, say but, to no, you, you, my know, friend, you what I, oh, I, I apologize. Oh, well, you just take away the, the, the Bible, the whole I didn't say, well, if I said you, that. You would not know God. If I, I said agree, that. I agree, I wouldn't. If I said that, I apologize. I take that back. 
What I'm trying to say to you is that a person can know God, know God, without any scriptures. I'm not saying really? the Really? Yeah. Can you prove this? How? How? Yeah. Okay. Let's look. You can't know God like, without, without his word. Without what? Without his word. Okay. So That's why Jesus said to the Samaritan woman, we know what we worship. Right. Because salvation, to be saved, do you even know what you're being saved from? To, to be saved, it, it's coming from Israelites. Because he chose them. That's the exact very point I've always said. <laughs> He's chose them to, to, to preach these things of God who's created all things. So if you come along and then tell me no, you can understand God without his holy word, then you don't believe in his holy prophet. It's not saying I don't believe in them. Of course, you know you know better you than that. Said this. No, you, said you know this. better than that. Come on. You have said this. You, you know said, better than that. You don't need the book. No, I'm not saying you don't need the book. You have just said it. You oh. said you don't need if you take away the Bible, you will um you you know you can know God without having the Holy Bible, yeah. without having the scriptures. Yeah, you can know God without you having can, the Bible. You think the animals know God? You think the creation know God? See, this is I this think is the animals know God. If Islam's taught you this, then then you have really you, you need foundation, you need foundation of what God is because you can't worship so, uh, God if you don't know what he is. Right, and the problem is you don't know who God but, is not. The, the animal, you see, who God is not is who you think God is. That's the issue. The God that is not is who you think God is. So you're saying that my God is Satan, is the devil. No, not, why you have to go so far? Because, no, I wouldn't say because so. Because for my God not to be who I think he is, he must be only something else. No, don't have... All right. If a person... There is no in-between here. No, yeah, there is an in-between. If, if a person... Right, this guy here. Right, he's from India. Right? In some parts of India, the cow is God. But I don't believe they worship in the devil. I just worship ah, the... Hey! I believe, hey, I believe they worship the devil. Well, I so the cow is the devil. Difference. So that's the cow how, the devil. That's how, how powerful Is the cow the devil? Hey, no. my man, you from India? Bangladesh, yes, man. Do they worship cows in Bangladesh or in it? No, yeah, in Hindu, Hindu. All right, okay. Yeah. yeah. The very See? Yeah, you act go. and worship that they're doing is worshiping Satan, whether they know it or not. Whether they know it or not. Because that's why Satan is called the great deceiver, because he deceives. He deceives. I agree with that. Yeah. Nathan. So, so, so. It's freezing it's not, cold. It's not that the, the cow is. We're in a dead. park and yeah. the temperatures I, I, are dropping. I've got to go as well. Yeah. But let, let, me, let me just make this point. Sorry? Let me just make this point. It's not that the cow is not the devil. You can't see the devil. All right, okay. You believe that you can see the devil. Yeah? The cow is not the devil. It's the very act of what they're doing. All right, they're doing it in the Let, spirit. Let's finalize. Let's, fi devil. let's finalize this conversation, Nathan. Yeah. I believe in you, and I know I really believe you're a sincere person. I believe you're seeking the truth. And from the last time, or from the previous times when I speak to you, I've seen a development, and I see a development in you even today where you're becoming stronger in your understanding and your knowledge of idolatry. I see that and I recognize that. Um, again, I encourage you to increase your knowledge in Islam so we can further these conversations. I encourage you to read the story of Moses and Kidder, which will resonate in your beliefs. And you and I agree very strongly for this conversation that it's not it is idolatry to take god unique qualities and attribute god unique qualities to god's creation yeah, I agree. or to elevate god's creation equal to him yeah. god has never created anything yeah. and give his creation equal status to him or above him you've never done that yeah. right so we agree on these principles I, I, I agree. we agree in these principles and i really enjoy that of agreement. I encourage that. 
and sometimes you i'm not here to discredit you you know like that you know we always try to come to some kind of common understanding and common agreement but also just to also clarify i didn't make a very interesting point about when we say jesus is god the question is he became god because people took him and worship him as god but he's not the god that is all-knowing that is perfect that is independent and he's not the god that knows the day of judgment for jesus no man no one in heavens or earth know the hour except the master one god no one knows like i've always said the son the son of god the son is not god i've yeah. always said it right and which you always said it we're on the same page the father is god good the holy spirit is god it's your final words titles. what is your final titles. words in this conversation final words my final words is remember these two commandments which one love the most the most important one love god with all your heart all your yes, mind sir. all your strength all your soul yes yeah? sir 100 percent. and the second commandment is light unto it and that's to love your neighbor as yourself yes okay so on, on those two commandments stands the whole law and it's, it, and it's greater than any sacrifice that you can um, offer to God. Yeah. Yeah? Because, look, do, do you also um, uh, believe that the, the Israelites uh, did sacrifices to God or, or not? Yeah, they did. They did. Yeah, they did. See? You're a Muslim that is very different to other Muslims because Hashim, again, doesn't believe that um, the, the 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 Levites, a priest a, a priestly clan, um, made sacrifices to God, like red heifers and things like this. Okay. He doesn't believe that. Okay. He doesn't believe it. So <laughs> it's 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 a. And the thing is, Hashim might very, be right. A lot of yeah, but he might he, he, he might be right. In religion, there's, yeah, but there's what I'm division. Saying. In Christianity, there's division. Yeah. In Islam, there's division. There's Shia, yeah, there's there's, there's uh, Sunni, yeah. there's you believe certain things, he believes certain so things. So, have you been reading? Have, have you been reading? One teaching, have you one been reading mind. a little more about Islam recently? A little bit. A little bit. Uh, yeah, yeah. Not enough. Not not as not as much as I read the Bible. Okay. Uh, because that is the path that I I believe. And no, but what I, I'm saying, I you have quite a, a few Muslim friends. You're developing very good relationships yeah, yeah, with your yeah, friends. I speak, I speak so then them, yeah. you would want to understand where they're coming from. Yeah. And sometimes some of your Muslim friends would disagree with something you're saying, but some of the very same thing you're saying might be in, your, in their scriptures. Yeah. So there's, yeah, 100%. Yeah. yeah. So that hence the reason why on multiple accounts, it's worth you looking into Islam with a very clean mind pure intention and getting a better understanding of do you believe that the hadith are divinely inspired divinely inspired yeah like the, like words from god by himself do you believe that it's the words from god himself which is perfect I think we should leave that for next day. We'll, yeah, we'll talk about, we'll, we'll that. Talk about that the next day. Yeah? Have you studied Hadith or are you looking into it? Not so, I'm not like all zoned in on, on it, but I have, I have recently read Start it. reading. Yeah. Keep on reading. Keep, keep on reading. You, you'll yeah. come around to it. Right. Yeah, increase your knowledge. Nathan, my brother, you, yeah? always is a pre it's always a pleasure. <laughs> we did that just now there. We just wrapped up twice. <laughs> Both of us wrapped up. Thank you, Nathan.